So even though it's hanging, it's still simple harmonic motion. It's just that we have this additional delta L that it starts with, and then any further displacement is going to contribute to the oscillation now. So indeed, it's still simple harmonic motion, even if it's hanging. And then, so we can see that here. And then um, if we take X zero to be this new equilibrium position, the position where it comes to rest, and if we hang the mass, it just pulls down a little bit. That's the new equilibrium position. And then the positive X direction is gonna be upward. We just choose that by convention. Then when the object is a distance X above its equilibrium position, the extension of the spring is gonna be delta L minus X, right? That's how much displacement there's going on right there at that point. Then the upward force exerted on the object is gonna be K times delta L minus X. And then the net X component of the force is going to be K times delta L minus X plus minus MG, and that's equal to minus KX. And that's because now we have this additional gravitational force as part of our Newton's law. The net force is now not just equal to minus KX. It's also got this additional minus MG component. But then what happens is this displacement from equilibrium plus the gravitational term, that's equal to minus kx, because really, if you distribute this, you'll see that k times delta L is equal to minus mg, and then we have k times minus x, so k times minus x equals k minus kx. So we can see here that that's the new way to define minus kx when we have a displacement due to gravity, when we have vertical oscillations. So what that means is that that's the net downward force of magnitude, that's it's kx. And when the object is below the equilibrium position, there's a net upward force wanting to pull it back that way, and it's positive kx. Either case, we've got a restoring force with magnitude kx. So that's vertical motion for you. Still, still uh, simple harmonic motion. Omega is still square root of k over m. Uh, the vertical simple harmonic motion doesn't differ in any way from horizontal simple harmonic motion. The only change is that equilibrium position. That's all it does. The weight just shifts it to a new equilibrium position. And then we're right back to where we started from. We just have to take that equilibrium position into consideration. Uh, X equals zero no longer corresponds to the point where the spring is unstretched, where the equilibrium happens. Equilibrium happens instead where the spring is stretched out to the point where we have the mass. Okay, so there we go. And then we can see here that an object, when it's placed on top of the spring, it's in equilibrium. The net upward force exerted on the compressed spring equals the object's weight. And that's how uh, typical scales work. We attach springs to scales. We know the scale's spring constant. We can tell what the weight of something is on the scale by how much force the object is exerting. So that's how we measure the mass and the weight of an object. We actually use springs in this practical way for, for scales, traditional scales. So if the weight mg compresses the spring a distance delta L, the force constant K, well, that's then gonna be equal to mg over delta L. So that's a nice way. We know K, we know delta L, we measure that, then we know mg from that. So we, we can measure mass that way. And so let's do a quick example. So we have shock absorbers and they absorb the shock so that when you go over a bump, you don't hit your head and you know the car doesn't bounce too much. It absorbs that. And the shock absorbers in an old car with a mass of 1000 kilograms, they're worn out. So when a 980 Newton person climbs slowly into this car at its center of gravity, the car is actually gonna sink 2.8 centimeters because it's like we're adding a weight to it so the springs settle at a new equilibrium point. The car with the person on board hits a bump and the car starts oscillating up and down in simple harmonic motion because the shock absorbers aren't there to stop that, to dampen that, so it actually oscillates. So we can model the car and the person as a single object on a single spring. If we do that, what's the period and the frequency of the oscillation gonna be? Well, we know that K is minus Fx because force is minus Kx. So then from there, we can figure out what K is. 
It's 980 newtons divided by how much the car sinks in of point, you know, 2.8 centimeters or minus 0 0.028 meters, because we have a minus sign here um, corresponding to the minus for forces minus kx. So that's going to give us a spring constant then, or actually it's downwards because then the displacement is negative. So we have a negative force, negative displacement, positive spring constant of 3.5 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per second squared. So that tells us our spring constant. And you can check indeed to see that this is also units of Newtons times meters, okay? So it's how many Newtons of force I get for per meter of displacement. And then we can see that the person's mass is the weight divided by gravity there. So it's the weight of 980 Newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. So then we know that the person's weight is 100 kilograms. So the total oscillating mass then is 1,000 kilograms plus the 100 kilograms of the person, so it's 1,100 kilograms. And then the period of this oscillation of the car moving up and down is gonna be two pi times square root of m over k. So we know the total mass is 1,100 kilograms and we know k, so the period is gonna be 1.11 seconds. So then the frequency f is gonna be one over t, that's gonna be one over 0.11 seconds. So then we have everything that we need to know then in order to solve the problem and model it. So we can see that the frequency then of the car bouncing up and down is literally just gonna be 0.9 Hertz. So that's a cool little application of simple harmonic motion. Okay, the last topic that we're gonna cover for simple harmonic motion is the pendulum. So you will see a couple of problems on pendulums. So make sure that you review this material because it will be something that will show up on the final. But I'll go ahead and cut this into another video. So we'll do one final video on the pendulum. So I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.